Welcome back to the wood shop, my friends. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what we usually do. Uh, today we're not working with wood, we are working with iron. Cast iron, to be specific. Um, we had a lot of people on our social media the last couple days ask how we uh, strip these down and make them truly non-stick. So we're going to show you guys that process today. Uh, we'll be working with this Lodge 10 and a quarter inch. Uh, these are some of my favorite cast iron pans. It's their wildlife series. On the back you can see we have a white-tailed deer. Um, they're super cool. I love these pans. But before we get into that, we should do a little breakdown of why modern cast iron is not great like old cast iron used to be. If you're in the cast iron world, you know that old vintage cast iron is highly coveted. People love that stuff. Um, partially because of the history behind it. It's cool knowing that you're cooking on a pan that's 100, 200 years old. Uh, but mainly because it works so much better. And for some reason, people have not been able to grasp why old cast iron works so much better than new stuff. So I'll just tell you today, um, companies like Lodge used to take a lot more pride in the stuff that they made. Um, when they made a pan after it was done casting, they would go through and machine the entire cooking surface so that it was flat. And that's why those old pans are truly nonstick. Um, they don't do that anymore. So a uh, cast iron pan is casted in a sand uh, mold. They make the mold out of sand and what you're left with is this. And so if you've ever bought one of the newer lodge pans, if you can see, it's very rough. And what that rough texture is, is the leftovers from when this was dumped into the mold. Um, that's all of the little sand texture. So back in the day they used to go through and they used to machine all that texture out so it's really smooth. They don't do that anymore. That's why if you've ever bought one of these and you try to cook an egg in it or something, it turns out horribly. It sticks everywhere. Um, it's not fun. But the good thing is you don't have to go out and buy a $200, you know, vintage Griswold pan or anything in order to get cast iron to work really well. So today I'm going to show you how we grind this surface down, um, remove all of this real rough texture and make it truly nonstick. So to get this thing uh, sanded down flat, you don't need a lot. Uh, I would guess that most people have this stuff in their garage anyways. This is all that you need. You need a random orbital sander. So you're going to use that. And then you need a whole handful of sanding discs. Obviously because this is metal and you're trying to remove metal you want a low grit. So I'm using 80 grit sandpaper. You can use 60 grit if you can find it but I found the 80 grit works just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that sander and literally just sand and sand and sand and sand until you get those high spots knocked down. So the reason that cast iron, modern cast iron is not nonstick like it used to be is because of that casting process. As I said, um, just for a little visual demonstration, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. If you look at the blown up surface, of that cooking, uh, that top cooking surface on the cast iron pan. You, what you have is you have little dips and then you have these raised bits. And this is all over the surface of the pan. If you were to magnify it, that's what the pan would look like. And that's what causes things to stick. Not these low surfaces, but these high surfaces. So what we're going to do today is take those high surfaces and knock them down. You're still going to have a lot of these little divots in there, but it's going to be flat. Uh, draw a flat line. It's going to be flat. So when you put your seasoning on there, um, when you season your pan, these are actually going to fill in a little bit with some of that oil. And then you're left with, 
a flat surface on top. Uh, that's one of the reasons why people will buy, if they're new to cast iron, they'll buy like a new lodge pan and they'll season it and say it's still not working right. Well, it doesn't matter how much you season it because even if you fill in these dips right here, you're still left with all of these high spots. So it doesn't matter how much you season it. Uh, and that's why a lot of people say, you know, you have to season your pan for 10, 20 years and then it'll be nonstick because you're literally having to add seasoning year after year until you fill in the spaces to make those high spots level. That's ridiculous. Um, you don't need to do 20 years worth of seasoning. All you need to do is an hour worth of sanding and knock those high spots down. So before you start sanding, um, you definitely want to wear a mask for this. You're going to be flinging a ton of uh, little metal dust and seasoning dust and the coating that they use on there. So you want to wear a mask. Um, this is going to protect your lungs for sure. And you also are probably going to want hearing protection because if you're sanding for an hour and a half, you're not going to be able to hear anything afterwards. So let's put that on and then we'll start sanding. Okay, so whew, we got that sanded down. Um, this is where we want it. I will show you guys what it looks like now up close. So as you can see, this is the bottom of the pan now. You can notice you still see a lot of these little black spots. The important thing though is that those black spots are those little dimples in the metal. They're little, they're curves that go downward in the metal, they're not high spots. That's fine. When I run my hand over this, this is smooth feeling. When I scratch with my fingernail, it doesn't get caught on anything because we just knocked all those high spots down. So those little dimples, as you cook with this thing more and more and you season it, um, as you should, you should season your pan after every time that you use it. Those tiny little dimples are gonna fill up with seasoning and just create a uh, perfectly smooth surface. So now what we need to do is we need to knock down the edge. The edge is a, uh, I found that it's a lot easier to remove the material. For some reason it's not maybe as thick up here. Um, I don't know the reason why, I just found that it's a lot easier. It doesn't take as much effort to remove this, uh, but it can be tricky depending on the size of the pan. So I'll show you guys how we do that now and then um, show you guys what we do after we get this thing fully sanded down and we're ready to move on.
All right. So, I'll show you guys what it looks like now. We just got the um, the side walls all sanded down, and as you might have seen towards the end there, I did sand down the rim, the top lip of it as well. I like doing that just because uh, if you get a little bit of food that splashes up on there, it's easier to clean off. So here's the pan. This is exactly how you want it to look. You can s see there's uh, there's still some of that black up here. That's fine because that'll fill in as well. There's some black here. That's fine. It'll fill in. If you guys notice, because I used the sander right here and then I flipped it up and used it right here too, the outside rim is very smooth. Um, that's fine right here on this pan. It'll still work fine. Um, that's not something that you want to shoot for though, because if you remove all these little dimples in the pan, um, the iron, like the pan itself, uh, is gonna have a harder time absorbing that seasoning, all those fats and oils that you put on there. If you were to sand the whole thing down to like a mirror polish, you probably wouldn't be able to get a good seasoning because there needs to be some texture in the pan. The important thing is just to knock down those high spots. So all these little low spots in here, perfectly fine. And as you can see, my hands are super dirty. So what we want to do now is we need to take this thing inside um, and give it a really good wash. If you use cast iron, you know you don't use soap on cast iron. We're going to use soap this time because that's there's so much like little metal dust in there. We want to remove that all before we re-season this thing. So the first thing that we want to do before we even start washing our pan is we want to preheat our oven. You want to have the oven temperature set so when you're done with that you can throw the pan directly into the oven and dry it off so uh, a lot of people are real militant about how they do it life is too short don't worry that much I'm gonna preheat this to 400 degrees and then we're gonna wash our pan very thoroughly to make sure that all of that metal dust is off All right, so our oven is now preheated. So we want to open this up. And if you'll see in there, I have a uh, baking sheet underneath. You're going to want to use that when we season the pan. But for right now, you can see the pan is still wet. So we're just going to take this, put this inside, and we're going to let that not only dry off uh, completely, you want all of that water off so it doesn't rust, uh, but we're also going to let that pan heat up because we're going to start the seasoning process now. And that pan needs to be very hot before we put our first coat of oil on there. All right, pan has been in there for about 25 minutes. It's nice and hot. So what we're going to do now is take this pan out. Don't burn yourself. Use some tongs if you need to to get that handle out. And then you want something. Uh, this is a made for these pans to grab onto. Okay. Oops. Get my cord out of there. All right, so there she is. And what we want to do now is apply our first coat of seasoning. A lot of people have their specific way of seasoning their pans. Um, as I said earlier, life is too short. Don't worry about it that much. The point is you want to get oils and fats into your pan. So what I'm going to season with, this is my preferred way, bacon grease. It works wonderfully. Some people say that uh, animal fat doesn't work as well as like flaxseed oil or uh, avocado oil or something because of the smoke point. I couldn't care less. Bacon grease works amazing. It makes your food taste amazing. It's a win-win. So we're going to apply that now and then stick it back in the oven to bake. So one of the keys to seasoning is you saw me just apply the bacon grease onto the pan. Um, that's step one. Where a lot of people go wrong is they don't go back afterwards and wipe off the excess. Uh, that's what you want to do 
Otherwise you'll get big pools of grease that harden up. Um, same if you use oil, you'll get huge pools and then um, it just won't turn out as well. So we're gonna wipe off the excess now and then we'll throw it in the oven. That's what it looks like right now. We've got bacon grease on there. As you can tell, uh, it still just looks like normal metal. And the way that I like to season is doing it upside down. I find that it produces a much better, uh, much better finish. So we put it in the oven and we're gonna let it sit there for about 45 minutes and just cook. All right, so it's four hours later. We have done four seasonings total on this pan. And I think that's all I'm gonna do on this one. So let's see what it looks like. There we go. That looks awesome. So we're gonna let this cool down for a couple minutes. It's way too hot to cook in right now and then we'll do an egg test. We'll cook some scrambled eggs in it so you guys can see just how non-stick this is. Um, if you've ever cooked in cast iron and tried to cook scrambled eggs, you'll see how incredible this is. Okay, so we're gonna do an egg test. I got my wife here giving me a hand because I can't film and cook at the same time. And anybody who's tried to cook scrambled eggs knows that they're extremely hard to cook in a cast iron skillet, um, but I'll show you right here. Try to do that in your newly bought lodge. It won't happen. And keep in mind that this is the first time that this pan has been cooked on uh, since we did all of this. So as you cook on it and you season it after you use it and clean it every time, it's just going to get better and better. You can see kind of in here, we got a little bit that looks like it's sticking a tiny bit, mm -hmm. but it peels right up. So every time you cook with this, it's just going to be more and more nonstick. But this is not bad for the first time. Like I said, if you get a, you know, a brand new lodge pan and then try to do this, uh, you, I don't even know how to explain it. You won't even have an egg in there. <laughs> you'll have a layer of crusty stuff stuck to it, and then you'll spend 20 minutes trying to scrape it out of the pan. Mm -hmm. So there you have it, my friends. That's how you make it nonstick. <laughs>